Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to a fun video where I will be playing with lots of stencils. There is a brand new release by Altenew and today we are celebrating with a blog hope there are lots of giveaways, tons of inspiration, so make sure to visit my blog. Now let's take a look at the stencils that have just been released. You will find geometric patterns as well as floral ones. And the first one is one of my favorite just because it is so versatile. It's called Hooven Stencil and it's one of those stencils that you can use in pretty much any themed card for your backgrounds. And you can see here an example. And you will see this stencil in action today. This is a Stripe Builder Stencil, another one of those super versatile stencils. I like the fact that you get uh, thinner and thicker lines and you can see at the back how it looks as a background. Now here's a really unique one with lots and lots of uh, half circles. This is called Modern Circle Stencil and I want to use that, not in this video, but I am planning to use that and see how it turns out if you flip the stencil in different areas to create uh, different patterns. Now here is another one which is one of those geometric. It's called Color Block Triangle Stencils. Use your washi tape, block different areas and use different colors. Now this is a really unique one. It's a called Mighty Corners Stencil and I like that they point to an area where you can add your focal point, you can even add your sentiment along the lines for a very clean and simple look of a card. One of my favorite stencils from this release is this one with the circle and the lines. This is called a sphere stencil and I will be playing with that today. I like to see the lines horizontally and it kind of reminds me of a sunset, which is what I'm going for today on one of my cards. Now let's move on to the floral ones. This is called Castle Motif Stencil and it gives you those gorgeous leaves and flowers. Here is another favorite that I will be playing today. This is called Leaf Bed Stencil. When you use it, you will apply color to the negative space and not to those leaves. And I'm going to show you a really cool technique today with this stencil. Now, finally, this is another adorable one, which is called Leaf Drops Stencil. And I know that this is supposed to be leaves, but for me, this reads mermaid tail. I don't know why. So anyway, I'm going to put those aside and I'm going to start on my first card. For that, I'm going to work with a circle stencil. I have secured that with washi tape at the back of my panel and I'm working with Distress Oxide inks. The three colors that I'm working with are Wild Honey, Ripe Persimmon and Fire Brick. I'm going to start Ombre Look, so from lighter to darker and I'm not going up and down since I don't want to distort all those lines. I'm just going side to side. I'm loading my brushes with way too much Distress Oxide ink just because I want this to be very saturated. And once I'm happy, I'm going to blend them out just one more time with the darker of the brushes and I'm going to lift the stencil. And you can see the wonderful result. I want to pop this design on my card, that's why I'm using a big circle die to cut this out so I have a lovely element there. Now with whatever is left on my brushes, I'm going over that just to get rid of that super white space in between the colors. And I'm not going to add too much ink here or oversaturate it since I don't want to lose the lines underneath. I have foam tape at the back and I'm going to pop that on top of a black panel. This is going to help those colors pop even more. And I have some of those leaves. I used this die set to cut them out. This is a parlor palm die set. And I cut them out from black cardstock. I'm going to play around a little bit to decide the placement and then I'm going to stick them down. For the sentiment, I went with the word thanks. This is the bold thanks die set that gives you the outline as well as the actual letters that I cut out from gold cardstock. And I finished off my card by adding some gold gems. For the next card, I'm going for a really cool technique. I'm working on watercolor paper and with my brushes, I'm going to apply two colors of green. I'm starting out with the lightest one, which is mode long, and then I will add on the edges pine needles. I'm planning to cut out this panel later on, that's why I will not bother to cover it up completely. And here is my darkest green. I'm going to apply it all around the edges. 
This is going to give a lovely look on my background and it's not going to look as flat as it looks now. I'm oversaturating the color and it really makes a difference when you are adding too much color with Distress Oxide inks, they blend nicely together. So remember I'm working on watercolor paper and now I'm going to place on top the lovely stencil with the leaves. I am spraying a generous amount of water and now I'm waiting for a few seconds which allows the water to react with the ink underneath. The fact that I'm doing this technique on top of watercolor paper really makes a difference because I can add way too much water without the paper warping. And you can see here the beautiful result. I absolutely love the look. This provides a great background for any flower, any flower stamp or any flower dye that you have would work great on this. For my card today I'm going to use a die cut flower. I'm using the Craft Flower Tulip stamp set and I think that this is just adorable. I'm using three different colors of uh, cardstock and I'm going to lay one on top of the other to create the tulip. And since I'm mainly focusing on how I created the backgrounds for today's cards, here is the final result with the tulip and my favorite Hello die by Altenew. For my third stenciled background today, I'm going to use a glitter paste. I'm using one by Nouveau just because I like that shine of the glitter and uh, the white on white sad look at the same time. But there are so many different pastes in the market that you can play with for different results. While my background is drying, I'm going to do the stamping for a flower. I will use a large flower from this uh, Kind Reminders stamp set. I like the size of it. There are actually matching dyes as well as a matching stencil that will help you to color the flower super quickly and easily. And since I am fan of quick coloring, this is the stencil that I will be working with today for coloring the flower. Now I do have the flower already stamped here and I am going to make sure that as I apply color, I will not go over any other empty areas. That's why I use that washi tape, loads of it all around to make sure that I don't make a mess. And I'm working with smaller blending brushes so that I have a better control and I don't make a mess around the flower. The first layer was done with baby pink. I'm going to reposition the stencil, make sure that I have washi tape all around to avoid mess. And then I'm going with a darker shade of pink, which is fuchsia. And the flower really comes to life like magic, super quick and simple. And uh, the stencils are very, very easy to align. I repeated the same process for the leaves, the lighter color that I'm using is Parrot and the darker shade is Mosh. Then all I had to do was to cut out the flower with the matching dyes, combine that with a sentiment and my card is ready. I also added a few gems here and there just because I cannot stay away from them. So these were the cards for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, links to everything I used are down below in the description area. Don't forget this is part of a blog group, you will find the link down below where you can find lots of inspiration and many giveaways. Thank you all for spending some time with me today and I hope you will all have a lovely weekend.